Hello, my friends. Welcome to another episode of Deep True Crime. I'm Manny Rodriguez. Thank you for joining me today. Our whole focus is to go deep in true crime and help you be aware of what could go wrong in your life world because truth is look at all this stuff going on out there this is some craziness and in today's case we're going to be talking about the case against barry morphew if you follow my channel you know we've been covering the barry morphew case quite a bit and so if you're new to my channel make sure that you smash that subscribe button click on that notification bell that way you get notified whenever we upload content and we've been really diving deep in the barry morphew case you see we shared the whole affidavit over the course of like nine videos and really diving deep into that i'll drop those links in the comments if you want to follow the whole case from the initial scene to the conclusion of that affidavit where they later arrest Barry Morphew. I'll link that in the comments for you. But today we are continuing the case and giving you the updates around the case against Barry Morphew. Defendants, the lawyers for Barry Morphew, they tried to have this trial dismissed. And well, there has been a ruling and it will not be dismissed and it actually has a court date now. And I'll share that with you as well, but I wanna update you on a lot as this 20 page order has come out along with details on where the prosecution went wrong. The case will continue and with the trial date. You see the defendants, they had renewed a motion for discovery and contempt sanctions in this 20 page order the judge in the case against barry morphew he was pretty upset with the prosecution and he let them know about it he basically ripped into them for what he called a sloppy and reckless pattern of discovery violations he said it was so bad he, the judge had to maintain an earlier order excluding 14 of the state's 16 experts that's a lot so basically the prosecution had 16 expert witnesses set up and the judge said no 14 of them we're not going to call them experts in this manner some of those that were ousted from testifying as experts were going to give their testimony they were going to give their opinions as to cell phone records, DNA, and telematics to the movement of the vehicle. And so those witnesses could still testify as experts during rebuttal, but they can't be called as the expert. Now, even though he wasn't very happy with the prosecution, and even though he ripped into them, Judge Ramsey Lama, he ordered that the trial investigating this two-year disappearance of Suzanne Morphew, who was 49 years old at the time of her disappearance, will happen as scheduled, and the jury selection begins in Cannon City, April 28th. And you know I will be covering that when it begins. According to Denver defense attorney, Eric Faddis, he says, this is one of the most severe admonishments I've ever seen, especially in a high profile murder case. And he said that these rulings have handcuffed the prosecution and reshaped the entire case. Deputy District Attorney Grant Grosbauer, he filed a motion April 1st asking the judge to reconsider allowing the crucial expert testimony. He says when he's talking to the judge, he says that if the judge doesn't reconsider and allow this testimony, their case will be so crippled, the sanctions would be tantamount to dismissal with the defendant suffering a complete windfall. This prosecution team, they have been doing everything they can 
to save this case that has been really that has been dealing with a lot of allegations of prosecutorial misconduct in the way they're going about this including the arrest and disagreements between some investigators over whether morphe's arrest in may 2021 was premature. During a motions hearing, Colorado Bureau of Investigation Director John Camper, he had revealed during testimony that he himself called Chaffee County Sheriff John Speezy to tell him to hold off on arresting Morphe until more evidence collection could be done. But other investigators that were representing the FBI, Chaffee County Sheriff's Office, and the 12th Judicial District they disagreed that he was arrested too soon. Because as we know, Barry Morphew, he is accused of killing Suzanne Morphew sometime between May 9th, 2020 and early morning of Mother's Day, May 10th. Barry told investigators that he last saw his wife at 5 a.m. on May 10th when she was sleeping and lightly snoring as he got ready for a landscaping job in Broomfield, which was a three hour drive from the family's Maysville home 17 miles west of Salida. As I mentioned earlier, her body has never been found. And this is why if they found Suzanne's body, that would make this so much more simpler for the prosecution because then they can hopefully find crucial DNA that leads to more proof as to what happened to this young lady who was taken from this world way too soon. Rest in peace, Suzanne Morphew. Prosecutors, they say the last time Suzanne Morphew was known to be alive was just after 2 p.m. May 9th when she sent that proof of life photo to Jeff Libler, her lover while she was sunbathing in the backyard and barry who she's been married to for 25 years he arrives home from work a half hour later and according to investigators who have been looking for any other proof of life they say there's been very little communication from suzanne morphew's phone after that except for an outgoing call at 2 53 the next morning and a mysterious near Poncha Springs at 4.23 a.m. Now, a former Boulder deputy DA, Ryan Brackley, he said that, you know, and the problem with that is that it's impossible to know whether Suzanne Morphew was actually behind those pings. If she actually, it, it's impossible to know if it was actually. And, you know, considering that here she is, mother of two, Mother's Day, also supposed to be on a Zoom wedding of her best friend's daughter. All investigators believe that this is all indication of foul play. You know, and you, if you think about it, with all this technology that everyone has access to, even as finding proof of life, it would be hard for her to just really disappear and have no sign of life the problem now is do they have enough evidence that can stick because if you've been following my channel you know I've, I've questioned whether this stuff would stick the fact that he got bond and he was bonded out that he was out and he's out right now tells me that or, or makes me question how much do they actually have on him and truth is it may come down to the jury if after they see all the evidence involved it literally may just come down to whether they feel there's enough evidence to put Barry away for the murder of Suzanne Morphew. Judge Lama said no to some of these witnesses in part because the prosecution kept turning in the information too late. The judge would set a date and the prosecution was always turning it in too late. The judge was getting upset about this, like literally getting upset about this. And this is part of what he was ripping into the prosecution about because of the timeliness of the prosecution and turning this stuff over. I mean, from what I was reading, this sounds like there was a lot of tensed moments in the courtroom as Judge Lama was ripping into the prosecution. Judge Lama, he's given the prosecution so many different orders that the defense was, you know, sharing how frustrating this has been for them 
over the discovery violations and they said this has been a pattern so they filed a motion on march 2nd and the lead defense attorney iris ayton asked for sanctions against the prosecution for withholding computer data from barry morpheus range rover which this range rover was in the garage the day that suzanne was reported missing by her neighbors lead attorney said this misconduct is non-stop there is never an end point the enormous resources it takes to investigate the prosecution's discovery violations is fundamentally unfair and outrageous and ever since voiced frustration they started receiving the information that they were requesting from the prosecution. Sometimes you just have to really speak up, right? And according to recent court filings, the prosecution will call 173 good faith witnesses. Now, by the time it comes, that number could, could change. And we're expected to hear from Suzanne Morphew's family, several close friends, neighbors, several of Barry's employees. And as of now, we don't know how many witnesses the defense plans to call and one more witness we don't know yet whether she will get to testify is a forensic nurse who she was going to testify about all the scratches that barry had on his arm and his hands that these scratches shown right after her disappearance so judge llama hasn't ruled yet whether or not she will be admitted as an expert testimony because barry says he got those in searching for his wife from all the branches and trees and all that stuff if you saw those things i'm sorry i that's hard for me to believe those are that that's from searching now barry as you know he's maintained his innocence from the beginning i mean at first he tried to say it was a mountain lion or was it a mountain lion he tried to ask like was it a mountain lion that got her and he had at least 30 different interviews with law enforcement the year before his arrest on May 5th of 2021. So he's been out on bond since September 15th and he, you can see that he's getting a lot of support from his two daughters. They believe he's innocent, it's my guess as of now. Iris Ayton, that's Barry's lead attorney, has said that she believes the case is not a homicide but more of a missing persons case. And she has even suggested that maybe Suzanne ran away or was kidnapped. But prosecution believes that Barry killed his wife because she was preparing to leave him. I believe added on to that, he found out about her affair. I feel like when he got home and she just sent that picture out, she didn't know he was coming up because he didn't even slam the door. So uh, uh, he didn't even close the door of his truck, almost like trying to catch her by surprise. The thing is, is that they found no blood and no evidence of a struggle, except that maybe those scratches would have been her struggling for her life. But they, outside of that, they found nothing in their home and then they find her bicycle in a ravine near the house and her helmet was found a few days later a mile away now there was unidentified dna that was on the helmet bike handlebars and bike grips that did not match barry morphew but his DNA was found on the bike itself. Prosecutors do not believe the DNA is that conclusive evidence of proof that Barry did not do it. Instead, they're, they're leaning on that cell phone evidence, Barry's truck data and GPS experts to help pinpoint like him turning left where the helmet eventually was found by you know by by someone you know and prosecutors they say that if judge llama excludes some of this evidence that it could damage the case in a big way they're saying that in a nobody case such as this the timing surrounding the victim's disappearance is everything in addition to some of this evidence not being allowed in february judge llama excluded from the trial any abuse allegations leveled against Barry Morphew that would be related to the couple's relationship. The judge said, no, we're not going to allow any domestic violence talk from the past into this case, including text messages 
from her best friend, Sheila Oliver, that describes their downfall of a marriage. And truth is, I, I can definitely understand that because really, if you stop and think about it, that's all hearsay. That even a text message, I heard her say this. And you can even see in some of those text messages, Suzanne says, I think. I think is not 100% assurance. So I can see why those why a lot of the conversation between Sheila Oliver and Suzanne through text messages wouldn't be admissible in court. Because really, Sheila would be given more of her observation of the relationship. And that's really more hearsay, right? It's just her opinion. It's just her thought. Now, I would think that if there were multiple witnesses of physical abuse, that would probably change everything. Multiple witnesses, not just one. Even in the Bible, it says a single witness shall not suffice against the person for any crime or for any wrong in connection with any offense that he has committed. Only on the evidence of two witnesses or of three witnesses shall a charge be established that is in the bible to me i see if, if there was multiple witnesses that can testify of physical abuse i bet judge llama would right away allow that particular testimony because prosecutors they allege that morphe did beat his wife suzanne on multiple occasions they even laid out several acts of alleged domestic violence in court showing text messages that Suzanne had sent to a friend about the ab alleged abuse, which makes sense because it's not, it's not the actual victim testifying or witnesses saying I actually saw him beat her. That who can actually get up there and say, yeah, this is just a alleged conversation really, right? So I could see why the judge wouldn't allow that particular part into the case and the pro one of the prosecutors Mark Hurlbert he filed a motion asking Judge Lama to exclude any mention of mixed DNA profiles which were found on the glove box of the Range Rover and not to allow testimony about alternate suspects during the trial and he also asked the court not to go into inappropriate character evidence of suzanne morphew like her affair including any mention of a alleged prescription drug she took because this would be based entirely on speculation but judge has not ruled on that particular issue yet now there's still a chance that the prosecution could appeal the judge's ruling excluding the expert witness testimony and so the trial is expected to last about it's expected to last as long as five weeks and so his next pre-trial hearing will be on tuesday so on april 19th there you have it my friends the case against barry morphew now you have your updates i look forward to serving you again peace